Hi, and welcome to Let's Make a Video Game. I wanted to discuss calling. In a video game, calling is the exclusion of objects from being processed or uh, being uh, sent a video card. Um, anything that is in your game world, uh, any objects, uh, need to be rendered. Uh, and there are, however, certain circumstances where those do not need to be shown, uh, which I'll go over in, and that's, and when we don't show those, we call it calling. There are two main types of calling. There's frustrum calling and occlusion calling. So, in frustrum calling, the camera in the scene that is showing us what we see on the computer screen Uh, has a field of view, just like a real camera. That field of view can uh, be edited easily in the, in Unity from the camera script. Uh, to demonstrate these techniques, I have the Unity editor set up with Windows side by side. The left side is the editor. Uh, this is not what we see in the game. Uh, on the when we're playing the game. It is the window that lets me explore the scene for editing. Uh, and in it, you can see gizmos and special editor icons and such. Say, like the main camera here. <clears throat> to the right is the actual view of the game as it is running. And you can see when I have selected the game window and use my controls to move, then I can see how the camera moves in the left side editor scene. I can adjust the field of view of the camera and you see how the gizmo lines that show the field of view of the camera change in the editor scene as well as the changes in the game. Anything that falls outside of this field of view is automatically called or not rendered by Unity and this is called frustrum calling. If the camera can't see it, there is no reason to send information about those objects to the video card. This saves a huge amount of processing time because the field of view is almost always going to be less than 40% of the surrounding area. However, everything that falls inside the field of view is rendered by Unity, and that includes things that we still can't see, such as grass on the other side of a building or the backside of a hill. Objects typically get rendered farthest away first to closest, but in scenes like this one, we still have thousands of objects that are being rendered, but we can't actually see. Uh, a method for excluding these objects is called occlusion calling. It calculates closest first and if that completely block, it blocks a back, do, a back object, then it doesn't render the back objects. We can see that then we use the spaceship mode and go up a bit and then look at the editor scene. Since the camera for the spaceship is behind it, the spaceship in front of the grass below it, uh, in that direction of the camera, the way that the camera is pointing. So the occlusion method excludes the grass from being processed and is clearly seen in the shape of the ship. Occlusion calling is included in Unity, but it is a bake process, meaning you have to create the scene and then run a tool in the editor that creates a database map of all the areas to create the occlusion effect. How <clears throat> this works great for static scenes, but not for procedural ones that are created at runtime and are more random. This program I am running has its own real-time occlusion calling technique, and it doesn't require baking. This is very interesting to me as calling has been one of the major aspects 
of my video game I have been working on after trying half a dozen different calling methods from the Unity Asset Store and from the forums, I eventually came up with my own couple that have been working pretty well. However, this technique that's used here may be better and worth trying to implement. Uh, this program actually is much more than that. What it does is transfers the object's data uh, in the scene from existing in the main program which would typically have to keep track of those game objects and each frame tell the video card where they are and what to or not to render. Instead it has moved those objects directly into the video card's memory and lets, it, and lets the video card go with them. Uh, this technique is called GPU instancing uh, textures or images for your objects are automatically sent to the video card's memory so it doesn't have to reload those each frame and usually you will have lots of objects in a scene that use the same texture so what this does it makes the video card share the geometry of the and location of the object as well as their textures pretty clever and creates a huge boost to overall performance if you've got a newer video card uh, that can do it and um, it has enough memory. Um, is it for my game? I don't know quite yet. Uh, there are uh, There's extra steps of prefab management I'm not comfortable with implementing at this time but like I was saying I was very interested in this occlusion calling uh, they've used. It alone could be the frame rate per second breakthrough I've been looking for. When we turned their uh, special debugging mode on, we, we get a peek at how the process works. Things farther away we see are darker and closer things lighter there is also a method for adjusting its sensitivity. It's very cool stuff and I will have to spend some time looking uh, this over in detail. Um, anyways, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you again soon.